Welcome back. We continue my conversation right now with the co-founder of Graycroft. He is Alan Patrickoff. And Alan, obviously, we had a really tough end of year in 2018 with the markets up, down, down again uh, with these wild moves. Did that impact funding of small companies? Did that impact your ability or desire to invest in some of these uh, early stage companies? You know, the private market venture and private equity, but particularly venture, is almost impervious to it. If you talk to an entrepreneur and say, tell him, uh, Joe, the market's been down 20% in the last two months. You, you were asked, you've been out raising money for two months and your valuation was $50 million. It's down 20. He doesn't want to hear what you have to say. And as a result, the private markets hang up there and it takes a, a good amount of time before the reality sets in. They have to be out there for three, four, five months raising money, mm. and then it'll be reflected. So it does not go down when the public markets go down. Okay. And so we're not, it hasn't happened yet. I think one of the reasons that we're seeing a, a big slate of IPOs is all this money slashing around, venture capital included. The IPOs, these are companies wanting to go public next year, uh, continues to rise. And in 2018, you had 191 companies raising $47 billion. That was up 32% from a year ago. Global IPOs, 327 companies raised $170 billion in 2018. Um, and a lot of healthcare, a lot of biotech. What do you think? Is it, Look at these names that are going public this, this upcoming year, Alan. You've got Uber, Lyft, Slack, Pinterest, Airbnb. What's your take on why we're seeing so many deals? Yeah, but Uber's been around for 10 years. Finally Lyft, going public, we years. understand. Yeah. I, I, I go back to what I said earlier. When I started Greycroft in 2006, the IPO market had slowed down. So we said, let's not count on it. I honestly believe I have to change my view based on what's happened in the last... I think the IPO market has finally opened up. But when you say 191 companies went public, do you realize... How, out of how many thousands of private deals that have been financed and over the last 10 that years. That they couldn't get done. Yeah, they, they're sitting there still private yeah. in private hands. Most transactions in the venture business are done in an M&A transaction. I mean, that's the realistic, I would say 98% of the companies in my portfolio and most portfolios get done in a private, we'll sell it out to another company. We sold uh, a company recently called Shipped. Uh, we sold early this year uh, for a very large price uh, we, to Target. We've sold uh, companies to Google. We've sold them to Facebook. Those the, are our the, buyers. Does the pri price today seem right to you? Are you getting the right pricing in order to come in and invest or have valuations got outsized and, you know, getting you to invest uh, whatever it is, millions of dollars uh, at, a, at a low price is sort of beyond? I mean, can you still get the price you want? Well, there's a lot of money out there well, that's what I mean. in, fun, in funds uh, that have been raised in the last several years. So there's a lot of competition. And particularly in the later stage. In the earlier stage, it's more disciplined. And it goes back to what I was saying before. We try to be as disciplined as we can and say to people, the value you're asking for was last year. It's not in the, in the current environment. And you have to get their mindset adjusted. And an entrepreneur who only sees one way up uh, is it takes time for that to set in but uh, it does set in at some point so but in on the whole valuations honestly have been relatively fair at the lower level you know which is oh. the seed round the a rounds it's when you get to with the softbank vision fund and you get into 100 200 300 million dollars that are being put into a deal at a you know I'll call it a B plus or a C round where there, that's big money and there aren't enough opportunities at that level listen you just saw transactions being done at uh, uh, in, in Uber at very high yeah. prices about 120 exactly billion right. dollars yeah, right wait we have to wait they're all called pre IPO rounds so those people are buying it with the idea that this is going to go public at a something more than 120 billion uh, and you know, the market has to justify it. Yeah. Uh, has to, they have to justify it by performance. I mean, are they even profitable? Not yet. At $120 billion market valuation, wow. I mean, I would expect some profits. Well, right? the, the, what has been purported is they're losing a billion dollars a quarter. Right. But a lot of that's expanding in new markets. But one of the most important things is after they go IPO, what happens in the two or three quarters afterwards? Because we've seen a lot of companies. I remember when Snap went public. I remember when Castlight went public. And 
the first or second quarter was a disappointment. The stock collapsed. Mm. And it's very hard to come back from that. Give me a prediction for 2019. Here we are at, at year end. What would you look at as sort of one of the expectations that you have for the venture capital market or whatever way? Well, let, let's talk about two. Let's let's bifurcate it in the terms of the public market. In when when our president got elected, and I was on TV a lot at the time, and asked him to prognosticate what the market the market was going to be. Right. I said, the market hates surprises mm -hmm. and it hates volatility. And we are getting how volatility we've gotten it since day one, volatility and surprises. And I've been totally wrong until the last two months. Yes. The market now is saying we don't like volatility and surprises. Mm -hmm. Now go to the venture market. So in terms of the market, the overall stock market, I'm very nervous as long as we have what we're seeing here in the from the political scene and the international scene. I yeah. mean, we don't know what's going to happen with tariffs. We don't know have taxes. The election well, cycle. Well, Europe is sort of falling yeah, apart yeah, right now. Exactly. That. So in the venture scene, and you talk to venture capitalists, they're not focused. They may have political beliefs, but they're not out there. They're not in the front end of, no, they're of just working looking for growth browsers. stories. They're not looking. They don't care about interest rates because they're funded with equity. Yeah. They all they're concerned with is. Can I sell my product? Can I raise money on an equity Top basis? Top line growth. There and you go. I, I would say there's going to be a continuation of a strong private equity or venture market, particularly. And not, I do think the IPO market has, is back again. And we're going to see a lot more IPOs coming up from a lot of household names that have been waiting in the queue for yeah. a long time. All right. Well, mom and pop will be able to buy into some very familiar names in the year ahead. Alan, it is wonderful to see you. Thank you so much.